Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, March 4th, 2021, and this is the week in charts. I'm sure I want to thank all you guys and girls for being here tonight. We've got a good good turnout. Glad to see you guys. Very glad to see you guys. So what are we talking about? Well, I think current, uh, current market conditions is the show. Your questions on trading, if you don't mind, wait till we get to the live charts on any, well, anything that's not related to the slides. So anything related to slides, ask now. Anything related to markets or whatever, ask once the charts or up the live charts. Your favorite stock picks, ask about them one at a time, if you don't mind, that's for your benefit. And today I want to talk about profit centers. And I think I'm just going to scratch the surface tonight. And I think I'm on to something here. I think it's something I'm going to work on a lot. Linda Rasky, if somebody comes to her and says, hey, I like this uh, futures thing with the E-minis and I'm doing this certain thing or whatever. And Linda's like, well, model it out. And that comes from, let's see if I can find it. Trading Sardines, which is a good book. I'd recommend you read it. You can get it straight from Linda. I think it's like lindarasky.net or something like that. But anyway, she talks about profit centers, and a profit center is, like I said, if somebody comes to her with some ideas or whatever, she's like, well, let's model it out. Let's check it out. And if this thing works, then you trade it as a profit center or we'll trade it as a profit center. And that's going to make a lot more sense in just one minute. But we do all that. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or as often summing up. All predictions are about the future. A lot of stuff can happen between now and then. A lot of stuff happened today. but we won't get into that. So where's Big Dave been? Well, Big Dave, for those who don't know, had COVID. And I didn't have like, a, oh, I was a little tired for one day and I couldn't smell anything. I had like, knocked me out COVID. 10 days in, my blood ox was low. I ended up in the ER, COVID. <laughs> I lost 25 pounds. Now, I found a few of those pounds. You're probably looking at me right now like, you don't look like you lost 25 pounds. I found a few of those pounds. But I was, it was pretty bad. And there were a few times where the blood ox was going down. I'm just like, you know, I, I'm just going to close my eyes and go to sleep and hope, hope I wake up. And my wife would, you know, jar me. And she really kept me alive. And I actually bought her some flowers and said, thanks for keep, keeping me alive. But it was, um, it was a long and hard process. Um, I don't want to get into it too much, but I, I guarantee you this thing was engineered. Just the way it, 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 it acted from a psychological standpoint, it did rewire my brain, which I'll get to a little bit in a few minutes but yeah that's where i've been dealing with covid uh still a little tired here and there it's like i um i saw it down a tree the other day and, and about halfway through, you know well i actually got all the way through but it pretty much wiped me out for the rest of the day so i, I do find that uh still a little tired can't do everything i used to do just got to take it easy a little bit but i'm i'm back and and uh i'm just on fire with everything so it's giving me a new lease on life I have zero tolerance for BS right now. You know, if you're serious, then I'll put you to work. Otherwise, call me when you're ready. Somebody I gave the service to a while back just to try to get them and understand, you know, what I do and how I do it and everything because they were really, really, really interested in trading. And talked to them a couple, couple months later, and they're like, uh, well, I, I really hadn't had time to watch a video. I'm like, it's a five-minute video, you know? It's like, so you – and I was complaining to my wife, and she said, just – just they'll call you when you're serious. You know, it's kind of like when the student is ready, the teacher will appear – type of thing. Hey, Laurent. Oh, by the way, um, books, that reminds me. Hang on one second. Man behind the curtain. So I've got seven boxes so far of the books. If you're um, if you're in the group and you played the, the book contest, then make sure I get your email address. My wife is on me. My office is torn apart. That's one of the things from COVID is like I'm doing things that, it, that I've been wanting to do forever. I'm building a desk for my office. It's going to be incredible. I've got four new monitors. I've got a, a trade station, uh, workstation. I've got all kinds of things. But anyway, so make sure I have your address if you were in the book contest. And I'll tell you what, our international guests got upset. So the first person to uh, – first international person, that could be Canada – uh, because it's it's too heavy to ship the books. I, never, I, I didn't think about shipping internationally. Anyway, <laughs> first person to uh, to write the word Amazon in the questions, 
that's non-US, I'll send you an Amazon gift card. I, I tell you what, the first two people in the show to do that, and that way I take care of my international people too. I have a lot of international clients, and I, you know, I wasn't thinking about that. I was just thinking, hey, these flat rate boxes, and then, you know, so that kind of backfired on me. But first person to put Amazon in the chat or the questions, I'll get you, I'll get you a gift card. Okay. So, but really, I've had zero tolerance, and and one of this thing that's kind of happened with the zero tolerance is in my trading, I I think a lot about you know it's like I don't want to deal with, deal with any BS, and I think about will this future trade make Dave mad, along those lines. And the other thing that I've been doing quite a bit, and it's really worked out well. Now I had a bad day today because I fat fingered something. I tried to fix it. And uh, it just got worse. And Linda Rasky actually in her book said, one of her rules is like fix fix mistakes immediately. You know, and I should have did I should have did that and then reevaluated everything. But I have a bad habit of fat fingering or something and like, oh, maybe it'll work out. You know, maybe I just got lucky and I didn't get lucky in this particular situation. I'll, I'll talk about it when, when the maybe when the wind blows over. But the other thing I've been doing is is really looking at in addition to will this future trade make Dave mad? Like, if I take a trade, can I live with myself? And or will I be regretting it? Like, gosh, darn it, why did I do that yesterday? And that's been a godsend for me lately. The other thing is like trade the risk, not my loss tolerance. Sometimes I go in on some of these wild and crazy stocks intraday and think, oh, I could go in and just maybe go in for a point or two. If it works, that's great. If not, you know, what's a point or two? You know, before you know it. Trade gets away from me a little bit, and I end up stopping out right before the damn thing takes off. And uh, that was one of my mistakes today. And that's amazing. What's amazing about this business is you could be in it forever, and then you know think you're going along swimmingly, and all of a sudden do something stupid. So that was part of the the problem today. Um, but you know, trade the risk, not the risk tolerance. If you're trading GME and you're using less than let's say a 25 point stop you're probably going to get stopped out, okay? I can tell you that right now. If you're trading E-minis, you probably need to give them 20, 30 points. If you're going to try to hold on to them all day, if not, you're probably going to get stopped out due to the chop, okay? So that's one thing I've really been looking at. Um, that's not a real problem with the core methodology. Like if you watch tonight's video, I showed a stock and I was like, well, it's going to require a 20-point stop, and that's what it requires. And if I go in and trade one of those stocks that I mentioned, I'll give it a 20 point stop. I'll follow that service exactly as I lay it out. In my own trading, sometimes I break those rules, okay? Okay, let's talk about profit centers. And this is one of the things that is coming out of the like post COVID. My my focus is and I, I have a bit of an ADD problem. You guys probably know that by now. Uh, not doctor diagnosed, but wife diagnosed. And since COVID, it's gotten really bad, and my apathy has gone you know through the roof. So it's like I don't care about a lot of things anymore. I don't sweat the small shit, and uh, I just demonetize my video. That's okay. Now I could say shit points later. Anyway, I don't sweat the small stuff anymore. But in some ways, my focus is actually gotten better from from COVID. It's it's a weird it's a weird thing, but I'm on fire and just excited about things and and a lot of this is spilling over into the trading and profit centers and it's like all I want to do is look at charts and trade and I don't want to have to deal with anything else. So so in that aspect it's it's fantastic. From a business standpoint it's a little bit harder, you know. Uh but anyway I'm working on all that. Now one of the profit centers is e minis. And a while back, somebody was asking me a lot of questions about E-minis, and they probably thought I was being a, a little aloof. And it's not that I was being aloof. It's just it's a really difficult market to trade. You're much better off getting into an efficient – I'm sorry. You're much better off getting into an, e, an efficient market like something with the core methodology, something like CPE that went up three or four bucks today, you know, as opposed to something that's incredibly efficient. And – Efficiency, if you're not familiar with the term, I would suggest you learn a lot about efficiency. And what it means is that you're competing against pea shooters like one lotters, okay, 
all the way up to the major players. Now, you would think the major players are all savvy, and some of them are, but some of them are not so savvy. I learned that from back in my hedge fund days. It's like certain people, like for instance, in bonds, the mortgage people come in and like, well, we got to buy a billion bonds. <laughs> they buy a billion bonds and the market would go up two points or whatever, they'd blow out our options. So just, just because they're an institution or whatever doesn't mean they're a good trader. So you've got a lot of people fighting it out and it's a very choppy market to trade. Now you look at a longer term S&P chart or something like, oh, I'll just buy them and hold on forever. Yeah, well, that'll work until it don't. But there's a lot of zigs and zags in between, especially trying to get in on intraday basis. Now, one thing that I want to get into a little bit further down the line as far as the profit centers are concerned is, and I got this sort of from Peter Brand. It's like he, he suggested tracking your emotions. Well, in that emotional tracking sheet, I also put a column for E-minis, okay? And I watch that number, I watch that sum at the bottom, and it's like, I'll have a really good day, I'll have a crappy day, I'll have a crappy day, I'll have a crappy day. But most of all, it's like, I'll have a really good day, a really good day, and then get chewed up, chewed up, chewed up, chewed up, chewed up, and I'm kind of back to break even. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Dave, why are you chasing your old tail? Why are you bothering with them? Well, I think if, you know, right now I'm breaking even. I lost money for a long time trying to trade them. And what I finally did, and it was by accident, I was I was watching a stupid five-minute chart way too much. One day by accident, I put on a 15-minute chart, and I didn't have a trade all day. And finally, I had a trade, and I made money. And then when I looked at it, I was like, well, that's interesting because the market just kind of, you know, it didn't, the market stayed a little narrow range all day. It didn't do anything. Well, those are 15 minute bars and they were much bigger ranges than it looked like on a five minute bar. It would, it would have been huge, you know? So that was kind of interesting. Now I've kind of moved from not profitable to, I would call it like rounders, like poker players call it rounders because people win for a little while, then they lose and they win for a little while. And they, they even titled a movie that. And a lot of times I feel like rounders. So what I did after doing all kinds of extensive research in S&P E-minis is I pretty much buy them if they go up and I use stop entries. Now I, I let them kind of chop around and I buy them on the breakouts. And my goal is to hold the low of the day. So if it's a breakout to the upside, I try to have my stop below that low. And then if it really starts ripping, I'll go ahead and put an automated trail stop and forget about my life. Or the short side, let's say if they're breaking down out of a morning range or whatever, I'll short them and then try to hold the high of the day. So my theory is if you get a trend day, if you can hold that high or hold that low, if that high or low truly is the high or low on the day, then you get this huge trend day. And that's worked out fantastic a few times where I've ridden it for 30 or 40 S&P points, which is huge. Now, I don't want to come across as some guru, you know, well, Dave, you just said rounders. Yeah, because I, because on other days, I get chewed up, chewed up, chewed up. So I can figure out how not to get chewed up so much. Now, along the lines of getting chewed up, and this is uh, oh, one more thing. Uh, one other thing that I, I used to do a lot of, and I, I don't do as much, but every now and then I'll go in and take a little piece. Like uh, I think yesterday I did this. Markets break it. If the market breaks down in the last, let's say five or 10 minutes, but closer closer to the close, like last five minutes especially, starts breaking down seriously or just starts melting up, a lot of times that'll follow through. And sometimes that'll follow through to after hours nicely and you could trail a stop. And by the time you get to after hours trading, you'll, you'll be able to be at break even on your trailing stop. Now, the problem with that is a lot of times you'll get chewed up doing that again. So I wouldn't rush, I'll, I'll have to preach against S&Ps and the jury's still out, but I figure if a year from now, I'm slightly profitable, keeping my head above the water, I think my spreadsheet is slightly profitable for the last couple of months. And if I can keep my head above the water, I think that it can be a profit center. I don't think it's gonna be my bread and butter, but I gotta figure out how to trade less, not more, and I gotta figure out how to avoid the chop. Now, Getting back to Mr. Brandt, um, I would strongly urge you to listen to new market, no, um, unknown market wizards. And the Brandt interview in there 
was really good. It struck a chord with me. You know, and I've been doing a lot of things like uh, he talks about closed equity. Your open equity isn't yours. But once you close a trade, it's yours. And I've actually, in order to fund all these projects that I've got going on around here, is I've been taking half of my intraday profits and putting them over somewhere else once those trades are closed. And I'm watching carefully my closed profits. And in doing that, it, it's got me thinking a lot differently about the markets. And for instance, like at a trading service, like CPE, and there's a few other ones that have that had really nice runs. I think we have a snapshot later we'll look at. And what I've been doing there is just 100 shares here, 200 shares there, putting in a trailing stop. Let's say I come in and I'm one point higher and it's going into new highs on a trade. I'll put in a one point trailing stop. You know, let's say I got 1,300 shares or something. Well, I might put in a one point trailing stop on a thousand, on 300 shares and hold on to those 1,000 shares as my core position, okay? Because 1,000 shares is plenty enough, depends on the stock, but 1,000 might be plenty enough for a core position. And then I'll flip those 300 out during the day and I'll just put in an automated trailing stop you know, have, I try to have all my orders in by nine and I try not to stare at a screen all day long. Now, you know, good luck with that. Uh, I'm cursing myself for going to lunch today because something moved 20 points that I just said, ah, I'm just going to get out of it and go to lunch. <laughs> you know, it happens. Spell the sign on SH. Anyway, long story endless. In Peter Brandt's interview, he talked about a quote, don't lose 30 cents in a 10 cent market. Okay. So S&Ps are chopping around, and today I'm, I'll have to add up all the trades. I don't think I made money today. I'm pretty sure I, I got my butt handed to me. And I, I messed around with the market when it was in the range too much, okay? And don't lose 30 cents in a 10 cent market. They're talking about commodities, okay? Commodities, a 30 cent move is, is a substantial move in the market. A 10 cent will be less substantial, obviously. If the market only moves 10 cent, don't go in and go in and out a dozen times and lose 30 cent and a little market that's just chopping around. So wait for that range to start to expand, okay? Try to avoid a fake out or two, which you're gonna have. You know, wait till the market looks like it's really going one way or, or another, a straight direction to move up, or a straight direction to move down. Close your eyes, put it in. Then also, like if it's going straight up, put in the buy order right above the market. Don't just buy at the market. Try to get a market order, I'm sorry, a stop order above the market so it keeps going, or a stop order below the market. So it keeps going. So as I learn more and more about the P's, I'll I'll bring that to you. I'll tell you how I'm doing it. And I really want it to be one of my profit centers. I would say the jury is still out. It's a very tough, tough market to trade. And after you get like two or three stabs at a market, you might want to quit. You know, like I think I had three losing trades today. And then I took one last stab at the end. Be careful and tread lightly. And that's why I'm not being aloof when I don't really answer your questions directly when we're talking about the S&P 500. The core methodology is really the bread and butter. And then I would say IPOs are a close second to that. The ogres, probably somewhere like next in line or possibly even Landry List Russian Dolls, which I just kind of pulled that name out there. We'll talk about it in just one second. So I do have a couple examples of some of these things. So intraday trading, I use the word intraday trading and not day trading. I have a client and we're real close and we talk a lot and he is an unbelievable scalp, excuse me. And he can go in and in and out, 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 you know, and uh, he can make a lot of money. He gets, then he gets chewed up, chewed up, chewed up, chewed up, chewed up, and then in and out, in and out, in and out, make a lot of money, make a lot of money, you know. Very tough way to live and very stressful and he's a little bit older than me not much a few years older we're all getting up there i guess <laughs> stupid story i went to I, i'm a hobby boy you know as part of building this desk i needed a little oven so it's like i wasn't gonna go buy a new one this habitat for humanity went and got a little oven the guy's like uh are you 55 years old or old? i'm like yeah he's like well today is senior day it's your lucky day so i got I got 50% off my purchase. So instead of $15, it was like $13. But anyway, we're all getting home. This friend of mine, a little older than me, he's scalping. He probably shouldn't be scalping. Uh, when I get into trade, for instance, I'm going to show you one in just one minute. I literally put my order in. And then when I got triggered, I immediately and automatically put in a limit order for half and a trailing stop for half. And I swear to goodness, I did not touch that. Touch the orders all day long. The limit hit and a stop trailed me out. The only thing I did was I exited on the close. 
I spent probably two minutes total on the trade, and that's that's the holy grail. If you can catch a stock early in the morning and ride it all day long, okay? Or even if it doesn't trigger early in the morning, just have that stop in place in case it triggers and then follow follow it up. So opening gap reversals, and I'm gonna show you one in just one second. I seem to find that they work better with $5 or more per share. You can really get chewed up a lot in those lower price issues. And I would say maybe bump that to 10 or more, but be careful. Anything less than 10 and it's just a completely avoid. I have my scan set to only show me $5 or more. And one thing I've noticed over the years is they tend to work a lot better in the big cap issues, okay? Just the opposite of the core methodology. So what happens, and this is, comes back to this efficiency thing, it, with efficiency, you can make money on an inefficient move, okay? When an efficient market makes an inefficient move. For instance, let's say it's a big cap stock and a lot of institutions wanna own it, but they don't own it, okay? And this thing gaps down for whatever reason. And let's say it's down 10 points, 100 point stock or 90 point stock, whatever, it's down 10 points. That institution might rush in and grab that stock at that low level to put it on their books, okay? And the other thing you wanna make sure is the stock is set up to begin with. So if I, I, think, I think if I waited, and um, not to talk about somebody that would be, would, would never trade like I do, but Warren Buffett or what's his name? Munger, Charlie Munger. One of those guys, I've got uh, Munger's wis wisdom book. I came across that when I was unpacking uh, packing these books. It's a pretty good book in that he gives you some wisdom. And it was either, either him or uh, Berkshire Hathaway uh, Buffett that said, you, you know, imagine you're given like a ticket book and you got 10 tickets in your book and you can only make, you know, can only spend those 10 tickets. I bet if I took a ticket book and I had 10 ogres for the next three months, I bet I could do really, really well on that. I mean, that would be a hard challenge for me to take because I see some shiny object or some shiny ogre and I want to go after it. But if I did have such a thing, I would tend to focus on the bigger cap issues that are like in really persistent trends and have pulled back. So every institution in the world needs to own that stock. So when their customers open up the statement, they see it in their portfolio, you know, why don't you have Amazon or why don't you have Netflix or whatever is trending at the time? So they do tend to work better in bigger cap issues. So here's an example. And this ogre showed up yesterday and I'm using Finviz for the ogres. If you go to, I think if you click on that yellow bar in the middle of my homepage, you could get uh, all the affiliate links for things I'm using. I am going to talk a little bit about TradingView in a minute. I'm after the people at Stock Charts to put in these altcoins. They have a few of them. They don't have all of them, okay? And we'll talk about that in just one second. But I use Finviz to show me the opening gaps. And again, my close affiliation with Stock Charts, I'm trying to get them to do more and more stuff. I have a tool card. I didn't have time to throw the picture in here. I've showed it before where I probably have, I hate to exaggerate one way or the other, but it's probably a thousand tools in it, maybe more. Okay. And it's a, it's, we call it the sortie cart. And my, uh, the joke is my wife's getting it in a divorce, you know, and, and it's great because if I ask her for a screwdriver, she knows exactly where they are or a wrench or pliers or whatever. And if she, sometimes she needs to fix something, she's actually pretty handy herself. She knows where to find it. So you use different tools for different jobs. And I, and like I said, I have thousands of them. I have a bit of a tool fetish, you know, I actually went out and bought something today. Uh, but that's another story. Anyway, in the my tools I use, I, I use Telechart, I use Stock Charts, I use Metastock, I use TradingView, I use Fidvis, I use a lot of different tools. And it gets quite expensive for the ones that I'm actually not an affiliate for. But I have become an affiliate of, uh, of TradingView, and I'll, uh, I'll talk more about that at some point. And again, if we can get all these, I hope the TradingView people aren't listening, but if we can get all these altcoins into stock charts, and I've been bugging them, then we won't need TradingView. But right now, I've been using TradingView quite a bit. We're going to get into that in one second when we get to the altcoins. So anyway, long story endless, you can see this stock rallies up, okay? It's begun to pull back a little bit, and then it gaps down. Now, I think I have the volume here. So I grab the volume. It's 
just a lot. You add two zeros to this, at least two million on average, okay? So that's a boat ton, an S ton of volume, a pretty good bit of volume. And, you know, it gaps lower in here, and I'll show you how I played it. And that was the only one on ThinViz that I liked that day. And what happened was, let's see if I have the animations working. So I come in, the stock gaps down here, and here's the actual trades I made in this one particular account. So I bought a thousand right there. Now you can see the buy was around 1130 or $11 and 30 cents. I had a stop order in place above the market. I think I had to stop at like 1125 or something. And you know, you see it kind of rallied up at first and then came back in a little bit. So I put in a buy order above that, got triggered in. And then I have immediately put in a limit order and got exited half of my shares at 1205. And you can see the trade up here. So that's, or it's actually down here. I was 375, okay. And then I had a trailing stop that trailed higher all day that didn't get hit. And so what I did was I sold the rest market on close or really close to close, you can see. So that's that sell there. So that's an opening gap reversal. I've gone through a lot of these opening gap reversals, kind of rushing through some of this stuff tonight. But we'll come back and revisit it. If you go in the members area under the gold, especially, especially in the Q&A, we talked about ogres a lot in the Q&A, trading those opening gap reversals. So there's lots of videos out there. In fact, if you look at the videos and one of them, I said, look, guys, you know, based on this Q&A, it looks like all I do is trade ogres. And no, that's just a very small piece of what I do. But it can be a profit center. It is a profit center for me. Very happy with ogres. now. The other thing that I'll do sometimes, and just for lack of a better name, I call it a Russian doll. If you rush a doll, as you know, is like a doll inside a doll inside a doll. It just goes on for quite a while. And I just had to pull the name out the air. But another way of looking at it is you want to have the wind at your back. So I'll take a setup off the Landry list that's set up. And this one yesterday, I played this one. This is Reggie, R-E-G-I. And I bought puts that I did take a, I did take a small position in it just to see if I could actually short it out right. But I ended up uh, owning puts and ended up flipping out half of those puts at a double. And not to get, I don't want to get too far into the option weeds because it's it's a can of worms. How many metaphors can I use tonight? I don't know. Uh, what would the world be without a hypothetical question, right? Spelled with a W. Anyway, long story endless, you could see nice thrust lower. It was also a bow tie, I'm guessing. This was on a Landry list last night. Pull back a little bit, and then so you've got this big old day trade position behind you. I'm sorry, big old position trade behind you, core position trade straight from the Landry list, a list I publish every night along with my trading service. And you go in and you look to get in a little early. You don't take a normal entry, and you try to capture that intraday move. And it turned out to be a nice little trend day yesterday, and worked out really well. A lot of times. Uh, you know, sometimes I get so busy. I'm looking at so many different things. And that's one thing, by the way, that's a negative about the profit centers is you don't want to get caught up trying to do too many things and then like not keep your eye on the prize. The core methodology is still, you know, keeping your eye on the prize. But sometimes I get so caught up in everything, I forget to check the Landry list. And yesterday I saw Reggie. I liked it. And I wish I would have looked further into Tan and some of these other ones that I actually got in today on the short side and the solars. And we'll take a look at the solars. And just one second. Anyway, you could see that a uh, nice little trend lower. So you're going in for an intraday trade, and ideally you want to get in as early as possible on a trigger and ride it all the way to the close. And I actually, because I had a small position here, I didn't bother taking partial profits. I had the puts, took profits there, and then I just rode this into the close. By the way, I guess I probably need to do do a show on deep in the money puts. Okay. If you can't short a stock or in general, it's probably not a bad idea to look at deep in the money puts. Make sure they don't have a lot of fluff on them, okay? Make sure they're not trading super high away or far away from their intrinsic value, okay? And then go in and, and look to buy those puts as a substitution for stock. You know, you got a big, your delta is 100 on those things. And a lot of times I'll do that instead of shorting. You know, shorting's a pain in the butt, and sometimes they won't give you the shares, okay? or they can't find the shares or whatever. So put the wind at your back. If you're going to just nearly really short something, pick something that's set up off the lander list or whatever, and look to get in a little bit earlier than you normally would, 
and then look to get out by the end of the day. Now, in some cases, you might want to take them home, but then that kind of comp complicates the intraday trading part. So what I try to do is not take too many of them home, just keep them pure intraday trades or day trades, if you want to call it that, meaning I'm out by the close. And the core positions, yeah, when I go in ahead of time, you have to make a decision, you have to live with it. And that's what trading is all about. And that's the secret to trading is making a decision and living with it. Okay, making decisions is easy. Living with them is not, as I often say. Making a decision to marry the most beautiful woman I ever met was a very easy decision. Living with her is not. I'm half kidding. Anyway, so make that decision. Say, okay, this is going to be an intraday trade. I'm not going to get pissed off tomorrow if it gaps up 10 points or down 10 points if it's a short. But then have your other positions that you really like going in. You're like, okay, I'm going to take a position trade here. Okay. Now, of course, the main profit center, and this is where I got to keep my eyes on the prize, right, is like, is the core methodology. And here we have the slide for my methodology, a little snapshot. We're actually doing quite well, believe it or not. Now, the Shiite coins or the altcoins, it's just like the core methodology. Uh, people were asking in Facebook recently in the Facebook group, they said, hey, uh, can I use your patterns in in and Bitcoin, because they were new to the group. And it's like, yeah, you know, go back in and do a search on BTC and you'll see, or Link or some of these other ones, and you'll see where I went in and actually pointed out like a, a, a daylight pullback in Bitcoin uh, 25,000 points ago, 20,000, whatever you, uh, $25,000 ago. And it was like a TKO into the 30 AMA. It was just a beautiful textbook type of setup. The entry of the high, stop below the low. It doesn't always work that well, but you could just trade the regular stuff that I do. We're gonna take a look at all these altcoins in just one second. What I would encourage you to do, I don't usually give trials to my service, except for that one exception I made earlier and then just, just aggravates me. When you don't have skin in the game, you don't care. You're like, oh, I'll get around to looking at that. But if you're paying for it, you're like, oh, well, why am I paying this? You know, it, this better be good. But what I encourage you to do, the reason I don't give uh, trials is because You've got 10 years or more or 20 years. I don't know how much I have out there. There's a gap. There's one or two gaps in there. So I can't say I've got continuous until I can go, go dig the hard drives out the garage and find the data. But you can go in and look at, at, at hundreds of the services, you know, starting with go back about, I guess, two weeks is probably the last time I published the archives. Go to the archives, davelander.com slash archives and check them out. And for those who are on the service, when you first come on the service, go down here okay and then there's there'll be a banner ad on my website not during this show but after the show or tomorrow for the trading service but go here and look at the recent archives to get a feel for what happened both good and bad because we had a lot of ebb and flow into portfolio and that's probably a, a show in and of itself especially if this market continues to tank i'm going to go through that portfolio and through the landry list and show how we started having some short setting up we haven't taken any yet uh, officially the core methodology in the service core trading service but we did have some stocks that somehow withstood this last little slide again for instance not to beat a dead horse or brag but uh cpe went up like three or four points today so that was a that was a good thing and that's why we just don't shut everything down just in case something that keeps continuing to run all right so archives uh, i've shortened this url it's just archives now davelander.com slash archives and i'll get those updated soon i think i updated them uh recently too if you're not a gold member, everybody here, I think, is. But if you're not a gold member, I would recommend you become a gold member. Facebook group has been fantastic. It's just It just has a life of its own. And you guys are going back and forth. And you bring up a lot of good stuff. And, you know, a lot of times I just lurk. You know, I used, initially I was I was in on every post and everything. And now I just kind of lurk a little bit. Uh, because you guys are so busy. You've taken the ball and ran with it. So I never know how to say that. Run with it, ran with it. Anyway. So I promise I'll make it worth your while if you become a gold member. Easy for me to say. All right, let's just, I'm ready to hop into charts. Uh, let's let's uh, shift gears here. And uh, let me just see if there's any questions on anything I've covered so far. You can tell them I'm fine. I'm like, <laughs> it's good to be alive, man. It was bad, like really bad. I just ordered life cycle trade, how to win trading IPOs and super growth stocks from Amazon. Oh, cool. All right. I don't know. 
Hmm, that'll be interesting. The IPO thing, and that's another um, profit center that I, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but obviously IPOs are a profit center. Buy at D is a great pattern there, first deep retracements, all the stuff we talked about in the IPO course, all the stuff we talk about when we're looking at these IPOs in Facebook. And uh, I'll get, like I said, I just kind of thought, uh, like woke up this morning thinking, oh, I got to talk about profit centers, you know, and I had a crazy day. So I'm like, I want to just get that out there. I, initially, I just wanted to talk about the markets tonight. But I was like, I've got to get that profit center idea out there and we got to start fleshing it out. And what I'll start doing, like today would have been a great day to show you what getting chewed up looks like in the S&P futures from a negative standpoint. But hey, it's like, don't do this. Try to avoid, you know, those choppy ranges. Uh, yesterday, the ogre, which I grabbed, you know, so I'm going to just keep all these profit centers in mind and start grabbing more and more charts as they occur, both good and bad, okay? So let me shift gears here and hop into the, uh, let me check if there's any more questions. Okay, everyone in the Facebook group should go over Jim Freeman's Mesa trade. All right, see, now I haven't seen that yet. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, I get, I get, enough, I, I get enough ideas from you guys to make it worth my while, so I appreciate that. Let's see, I've got so, oh, wow, chatty bunch tonight. I've got so much going on. Let's see if we can find Kathy Donnelly. Oh, that's who uh, wrote the book? Okay. Yeah, I'd be interested to see what's in that. I, you know, just by the title, you know, and it's like, don't judge a book by its title or cover or whatever. Just, uh, it sounds like they're confusing the issue with facts and putting some... I don't know. It sounds like a theme-based investing book, and theme-based investing sometimes works, but I'd rather have the technicals first, like ASO, Academy Sports. We've been long that stock as long as I can remember, taking partial profits and trail that stock higher. Well, come to find out, that's a theme-based trade uh, because people are sick of looking at each other inside. It's like, well, let's go buy some kayaks or bikes or do something, get the flock out of this house, and that's why Academy has been doing so well, okay? I didn't think about that going in. I saw a pullback. That's all I saw. And, you know, we'll look at some next week and week after whatever. I know I need to get back to those trading resolutions at some point, but I think this is more important, the market and the profit centers. But we'll get back to all that. Um, and I'll, I'll show the, the ASO trade. And that's the beauty of technical analysis is I didn't know that that was going to be a theme play. And I bet a lot of people didn't even think about it as a theme play when it set up. Okay. And then it it ran nicely, obviously. Keep us out of the FOMO trade. Boy, I tell you what, FOMO is, I have a column called FOMO in my, uh, I've showed it before. I think I've published it in the Facebook group, but I've showed the columns on that spreadsheet, you know, and I've got one that's a shame, which I'll have to put an entry in tomorrow. I don't feel like, it's funny, boy, when I'm doing great, I'm all in that spreadsheet. When I'm not doing great, I'll get two or three days behind, but try to track those emotions every day. Try to track your mistakes. Try to get better. Try not to make the same mistake twice. What's the old saying? A, a mistake made twice is a choice. Okay. I know it's tough in this business sometimes. Yeah. You know, the micro, yeah, good point, George. Micro S&P is a great place to start. Go in and just risk a hundred bucks, you know, and, and figure it out or, or whatever the market requires. It might be a little more than a hundred bucks, but just, just trade one and give it a big wide stop. And you're going to be amazed. And you're trading a lot of people. I fixed a lot of people, not made any money from it, but fixed a lot of people. Like, uh, hey, Dave, I've been stopped out. I've got stopped out like 21 times in a row. It's like, well, your stops are too tight. Loosen your stops. And and lo and behold, they start catching trends again. You know, I didn't really start making money in the S&P futures until I started using like a 20-point minimum stop or a 30-point minimum stock. And I'm sure a lot of people are going, <laughs> you know, STOP. Now, there are some cases where you can get in and, and use a little bit tighter stop than that. But as a general statement, I really didn't start moving into profitability, okay, or, or break even maybe. You know, I want to brag too much. It's a little too early for that until I started using like a 20 and 30 point stop. So, yeah, stops, widen them out will help quite a bit. Interviewing, interesting psychology of the bar slash time period. Okay, that's out of context. I'm not sure where you were with that, Craig. Uh, was it something we were talking about 20 minutes ago? Yeah, it's uh, 40 minutes, 30 minutes ago. Put on the index as a way to hedge too. Yeah, you know, you got to be careful with, with, with hedging 
but I'll tell you this. And I don't know, and the jury's still out on whether or not it works. But if the SP futures are imploding and I'm heavily long, I'm going to go in and just close my eyes and short some futures. Okay. And then try to sort it all out later. But I will do some, some plunge protection. And, you know, I know we brought it up earlier or like, like earlier this year in the Facebook group. I kind of lost a month of my life. You know, it's crazy. Uh, but yeah, I think there's something there, but you got to be hedging is a real tricky thing. You got to be really careful. It has been recommended by a very good swing trader. Oh, the book you're talking about? Okay, well, then it must be good. From the five minutes to the 15, the how? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Craig's saying that me becoming break even or slightly profitable in the S&P futures was that I stopped looking at the five minute bars, which do this, you know, before they do that. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. Anyway, uh, what's that comedian's name? He's always pointing his fingers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's like by complete accident, I'm like, what's up with these peas? You know, because I'm, I'm I was kind of gun shy about choppy ranges. And I remember, I just waited and waited and waited and waited and waited and waited and waited, and I didn't get any trades. And then like afternoon, you get those slim gems that happen in the afternoon and stuff, and and all of a sudden it's like it starts breaking out. So I jumped on and I made money. You know, I'm like, oh, that was kind of neat. You know, next day same sort of thing happened, but to the downside, I'm like, well, this what's up with this market it's just kind of chops around all morning and then finally makes a break or chops around at least half of the morning you know normally i'd have two or three trades in and out by then you know, two hours into trading and finally i realized by accident i had switched to a 15 minute chart when going from daily back to five minute so absolutely you know and that's just a simple little thing and you know a lot of trading is seeing that forest for the trees easier said than done when you're in the trees and there's you're being attacked by animals in the forest. All right, let's get to the altcoins before I forget. Where'd they go? So again, I'm using Trading View for this. Uh, if you go over to, let's see if my button's working here. Let me get the screen shared. And again, I'm working with the people at Stock Charts. I admitted to them that I'm cheating on them a little bit. <laughs> so. But if I go with stock charts, let's see if my button will work. I've got a little stream deck here, which is pretty awesome. But I always forget to use it. It's like, you know, I was looking at, I saw the, I saw the big stream deck. I'm like, oh, I need to buy one of those. You know, it's like $500. I'm like, Dave, you're not using the little stream deck you have. So this is my stock charts. Uh, this is their ACP platform, which is awesome. And I do have a plug-in for this, which is free. You just have to like this video if you're watching the recording of it on YouTube. And, and also subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of good stuff. I promise. Please subscribe. But anyway, you come in here, and I do have some of these altcoins in here. I'm uh, Again, I'm working with them to, to put more and more in. And let me see if I can find that Bitcoin trade for you. Then I want to talk a little bit about the rest of these altcoins. So if memory serves, and you guys hold me to this, if memory serves, somewhere around, oh, geez, it might have been down here. Uh, yeah, it was down here. Now I remember, okay? So Landry Light pullback, you've got a nice, nice uptrend here. And this just counts to those who are watching who don't know Landry Light. Landry Light just counts the number of bars that a, a stock or other market is above the moving average. But you had tremendous Landry Light for a long time, meaning that this thing is trending. And it amazes me how something so damn simple could actually work in real markets. And then Bitcoin pulls back to it. And then they got a trigger here. It kind of meandered for a little bit. But again, what did I say earlier about stops? You know, it's kind of like that five minute market versus a 15 minute market. Once my stops got wide now, you know, it's like, wow, this thing needs a 20 point stop based on this range. That, that's odd. I've never usually used a five point stop and I get stopped out really quick. You know, all of a sudden I wrote them all day long. Well, same thing here. You have to give it plenty of room. But yeah, this was a setup back here, Landry Light pullback. Here was another one in here. This was like kind of a TKO in here. You might have gotten shaken out on that one. But you could, you could see still 20, 30,000 points. Uh, uh, was it 30? Yeah, I guess it's dollars, points, dollars, same difference, I guess, with, with uh, Bitcoin US dollar. You could see that came down here and knocked out. And then it had a nice little trend. Now it's kind of setting up again. This is like a trend pivot pullback. So your entry would be right there. And then a stop, give it a little bit of wiggle room, maybe down here or something. So you can see the core methodology 
does work in other markets. As these markets become more efficient, it won't work as well. Now, my my COVID thing was I woke up a few weeks ago and I hit it just right. Okay, and I, and I got a little lucky. And I was talking with uh, John Z. John, you here tonight? I was talking with John Z in the Facebook group. Also, my daughter was like, Dad, you got to buy some doggy coin or whatever it is, Dodge coin, dog coin, whatever. And uh, so that got me thinking on one Sunday morning, you know, I got a big cup of coffee. And it said, I'm going to figure out these altcoins. When I first tried to figure them out, I made a big mistake. And I tried to learn what each one was. And that's the same way I approach stocks. Like, what do they do? Do they make money? And, and you know, look at all these funny minerals and stuff. But the reality is, you don't have to do that. You don't have to care what they do. You just only have to care if they're going up. Now, when I got in them a few weeks back, I've been trading um, Ethereum, Litecoin, Doggy Coin, a little bit here there, but just mostly Ethereum and Bitcoin and and the big ones. And then uh, I think John Z turned me on to Link, a, a long Link right now. I've traded uh, that for quite a while. But then between John Z and my daughter want me to go in and buy some Doggy Coin or whatever they call it, Dodge Coin, Dog Coin. Which is total BS. But so what? You know, it was going up. I began trading these altcoins. And the two things that I've done was if you get in a runaway relative strength market, something like this mana we have in front of us now, like going straight up, if they're all kind of going straight up, buy the one that's going straight up the most. Okay. And then if it starts stalling out like this and something else is going straight up, sell it and buy something else. And I was going in small sizes, but I was going in scratch, scratch, make a little, make a little, make a little, and then bam, hit it out of the park on one of these. But that's only in a runaway relative strength market. Every other time, what you want to do is look to do more of like the core methodology. Like this one here, you could see nice trend. It's pulled back a little bit, have no idea what they do or what it is. I guess the only thing that I might be failing to do is check the liquidity on these. And if somebody's familiar with altcoins, leave a comment below or uh, let's pick it up in Facebook and let's talk about liquidity. But this is one here, B&T. I bought, see, he had a nice little thrust higher, nice little pullback. I'd be willing to bet. I don't know how to use this platform yet. And then hopefully I, I'll just be able to use stock charts. But nice little pullback, probably to the 30 day or below. Landry Light pullback and it took off again. Bitcoin we just talked about. So these altcoins or shy eye coins, whatever you want to call them, they're just these little crappy things. And and you know, I got to thinking about it. It's like, well, I don't should I be calling them by this negative name? Because I'm all about being positive, you know, I'll be positive, Dave. I was gonna be a pessimist, but I figured it wouldn't work out. I think that's also Stephen Wright. But I got to thinking about it, it's like this makes me think like, okay, if they're not working, well, if they're crap coins anyway, let's just get out of them. And it makes trading them a heck of a lot easier. But these are these are the altcoins, the ones that aren't the big ones in here, all these little ones you probably never heard of. I'm long this one too, probably from that pullback right here. I think if memory serves, I've taken partial profits on it. I actually started having a blast trading these and it was it was hard for me to focus on anything else. And that's one of the problems with the profit center. You know, and here I am messing around with this little stuff, you know, nickels and dimes, and when all the big stuff is is over there in my trading uh, station, and I gotta pay attention to it. But it's 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 a great way. I don't want to use the word supplement your income, but the idea is let's say you've got about five profit centers plus your core methodology. Well, your core is going to be your core, but if you could with those other few little profit centers, provided that the markets aren't correlated too tightly, and sometimes they are, okay. But you know, like that little one we just looked at, that's going straight up. Market right now, stock market, as we'll see in one minute, it's not doing so hot. But that little coin is going up. So if you could sort of not let get sucked in like I did over the last couple of weeks, but now that this consumes you too much, you could trade these all coins. You could trade some other things and and slowly open up the profit centers. And you know my fantasy is that if I could get enough profit centers working, and then still put the majority of my money into my core methodology, which I believe in and which works. And when it works, it really works well. You do get knocked out here and there. You do have some losses. You do have five or six months where you think I'm a total idiot. 
but then you finally knock it out the park. And, and you know, my best clients are those who've been with me for years through the ups and downs. And when the, when the downs come along, they just know, hey, it's part of the t- comes to territory. Just allow myself to get stopped out and get out of the market. I'm gonna have to exit this link. <laughs> oh crap, that's not good. Hang on, I'm gonna get out of that. <laughs> oh, that's not what I thought it was. Never mind. I'm gonna have to edit that out. See, I got a trading screen over here. You see, you see how I am with shiny objects? You see what happens? <laughs> that is one that's going to the moon, and I am long that particular one. And I forget exactly where I bought it. I may have just bought it on like the relative screen type of thing. But yeah, for a while, it just seemed like these things just go straight up, but then they correct hard. Because like I played, and I don't have to go in and look at the trades, but like I'd come in and see like this OXT, like right here going straight up. I would just jump on it. And, you know, before, you know, on Sunday morning, you know, my wife probably like, what the hell's wrong with Dave? Or where's Dave? You know, before I know it, I was here for hours uh, playing a relative strength game in these things. So they will suck you in. So I would say, number one, tread lightly. Don't put any more money into something like this than you can afford. You know, the, you lose your money. Don't blame me. You know, I told you they were shite coins, you know. But anyway, it's something I wanted to show you, something I'm really having fun with. Uh, is it going to be viable longer term? I don't know. But I think that markets are markets. And it is another market that that can be traded. Okay. And if uh, you guys have this uh, platform, I'll share my watch list with you. If you have uh, stock charts, I'll share my watch list, everything that they have so far. And again, I'm nudging them to put more and more. So that's crypto. So let's hop into the let's hop into the markets. And if you guys want to start asking about individual stock questions, uh, please do so now. Let's change applications to it's not up yet. Let's just stop sharing. Let this boot up. Chris H says, we have so many Chris's in the group, to pair with Landry Light, add on coding to search for pullbacks, the moving average. Yeah, that would be nice, Chris. Um, and uh, could you do me a favor? I bugged the hell of these people for so much stuff. They're, they're probably trying to get rid of me by now. But yeah, could you say, uh, hey, I really like, uh, you know, just so they'll keep me on staff. I'm not on staff. I just, I, I don't, I don't get paid, FYI, but on staff, so to speak, keep my show on on uh, Stock Charts. By the way, Stock Charts TV has launched and you can find it at stockcharts.tv, I think, or stockchartstv.com. You can also get it on Roku and uh, some other platforms, okay? So all of a sudden, you know, out of the blue, a lot of people are contacting me, got a little bump in business, like, what's going on? You know, I'm, I'm dead. I'm, I'm dying. I'm not dead, but I'm not dead yet. But I'm on the couch dying. And all of a sudden, I get up and check my emails and go back to the couch. And uh, they launched that while I was, they had a soft launch while I was sick with COVID. So anyway, it's kind of cool to uh, to see that. So check that out. I'll get the links and all uh, and publish it in the group. All right, let's take a look at this market. S&P 500, as you know, as soon as the market closes below, okay, the first day it closes below, learn this from Greg Morris, the exponential moving averages will turn down. As soon as it closes above, the exponential moving averages will turn up. The simple moving averages might take a little while to catch up. Now, by accident, I discovered the relationship between the 10-day simple, the 20-day exponential, and the 30-day exponential. And I have dubbed that bow ties, okay? When they come together over a sharp period of time, ideally three or four bars, three or four one-minute bars, three or four five-minute bars, three or, more, three or four weekly bars. Let's hope we don't get a bow tie down. We talked about that earlier last year <laughs> when it got pretty ugly. Market imploded after a daily bow tie down. I think it made a weekly bow tie shortly thereafter. But anyway, as soon as the close, notice right here, this exponential moving average actually turns up. Squint your eyes, you can see this, it stayed up, okay? But as soon as it closes below, notice these moving averages are turning down. This is all this is all talked about quite a bit under moving averages in the goal section, FYI. But you can see that the, the 10 simple has now turned down. You know, notice like back here, it's still going up, even though the price is below it. But now the 10 simples coming down, we could see a bow tie to the downside. I'm going to show you a, a, a signal here in just one second. Let's take a look at, uh, here. For, here's a signal, for instance. Solar stocks, okay, rule number one, 
moving average crossing of those three moving average. Rule number two, pullback would be just a one bar pullback. Rule number three, shard it when it takes out that pullback. Oh, no charge? Crap. Boy, I got my work cut out for me tomorrow, redoing those charts. Okay, so make sure we're seeing it. I'm out of practice. Yeah, normally I put up, there's an audience view thing where I could see what you're seeing. Thank you for uh, catching that. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so uh, back to where I was talking about bow ties. We got a bow tie down, okay, and then the market rallies up. And it could be a one bar pullback, like I just said, and then a nice little sell off out of tan. I am, I do own puts. I'm not short. I tried to short it. It won't let you short it. You can't short tan. Before I forget, let me just take a look at it. Let me show you what's going on in a dollar real quick. Dollar's getting a little stronger in here. So maybe that's why those shy coins are having a hard time getting going. Okay. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ's looking pretty ugly pretty fast. Okay. How's that for an oxymoron from a trend following moron? Down 2% today. You can see the bow tie moving average is on the cusp of crossing over. And you know, for all intents and purposes, you did have kind of like a first thrust in here, kind of a micro first thrust. Uh, longer term, these indices are still A-OK. -okay. It just looks like they're pulling back. So you want to see the forest for the trees. I have a small account. I haven't looked at the market timing in a while. I saw the sell-off today. I saw we were below the moving averages. So I looked at it right before we went live and I looked at the TFM 10% system. And I noticed that it's a long ways away from triggering, but we're gonna have to pay attention to that. I'll show it to you when it triggers, but just keep an eye out on your own. Uh, if you're not a gold member, there's a free market timing course that you can access. And I've got a big old long URL, but if you contact me, I'll give it to you or I'll put it down in the comment section. So as we go through these sectors, you can see energy is doing pretty good, just off of multi-year highs. So that's a good thing. Metals and mining, well, they got whacked today, but longer term still in an uptrend. That's pretty much where the good news ends. Take a look at drugs. See, there's your bow tie. Okay, a little pullback here, a little sell off. When it works, it's 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 like butter. It's beautiful. Okay. Take a look at biotechnology. So it was almost a bow tie, but not quite. But then you can see pretty serious sell off. It's a first thrust. Nonetheless, health services, same sort of action going on there too, beginning to roll over. Now, if you want to see a bit of a textbook bow tie, in fact, this is actually more of a textbook first thrust. Notice the big thrust lower, followed by a little pullback, and it's backed up by the bow tie. That's retail, okay? Retail's imploding. We are on, again, Academy, ASO. You can go back and rewind and look at that portfolio and see where we're long. And we've been long Academy forever. OK, so somehow and, you know, I don't want to talk about theme investing, but we got long back here or oh, back here. I forget. I refused to buy it early on, which I would have just because the range wasn't fantastic and it's kind of a boring retail stock. But the, but the chart was talking. OK, so I did put it on the service back here and I did get long and am long on ASO. Gold has been pretty weak. The gold stocks, this is gold stocks. Let's take a look at gold, the commodity. Gold, the commodity, banging out new lows with a bit of vigor. The gold stocks have been getting hit pretty hard. As you can see, choppy, 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 but in a downtrend. Silver stocks look like they're rolling over. Silver itself beginning to break down in here. About a week ago, my mother-in-law asked me to help her buy some silver. I haven't gotten around to helping her, but I just emailed her and said, look, the market's going down sit tight so she doesn't come after me so the thing is i've been talking about it talking about it talking about it loss of momentum possible sector rotation and everybody's beating the dead horse on it so i'm not the first one but you can see a lot of areas beginning to roll over look begin, a lot of areas looking a little dubious in here i wouldn't rush out and sell the form you know you might want to get it appraised but i would I wouldn't rush out and sell the form just yet. Do let your stops take you out, okay? Rewind this if you're watching the recording. Go in and look at like CPE and some of those other ones, ASO, CPE, that we've been long forever. Even though the market's tanking, they're kind of hanging in there and doing well. And that's why we don't just pull the plug all at once. Sometimes you probably think, oh man, I wish I would have. But every now and then you, you get in one and it keeps going higher. So.
gosh darn it, Dave. That's not what he said. You got me with this show. What is your RSI time period? I don't use RSI. Uh, it's relative strength, okay? So I'm not going to switch back to the chart. But in, in Telechart, for instance, if you're looking at the Landry list, and I had a client, I had a client got a down payment on an investment property by doing this, and he did it more than once. You know, it's like, why did he tell me at the time that he did it, and why did he tell me he did it again? I, you know, I don't know. But like, if you're running a, a live Telechart chart, you can come here and you could like sort everything by, you go to real time and then you go to percent change, okay? And that's gonna show you, and it updates during the day. There's other ways of doing this. I think CNBC has a free app and that's what he was using. He was using his phone, CNBC free app, okay? And he put the Landry list in every morning and all he would do was, would, was trade his phone all day long and he would stay at the top few stocks on the Landry list. But you could see for the day, energy was up 2%. Now, today would have been a fantastic day to trade relative strength, okay? This is relative to other people, not RSI. Don't use RSI. I, I, I wouldn't know RSI that hit me in the ass, okay? I wouldn't know half these indicators. As I often say, people like email me, you know, Dave, the stochastic is this. And I'll say, what's the stochastic? And they'll spend like three pages talking about stochastic. I'm like, I know the stochastic is, you know, I read about it in, in one of these books that I'm shipping off, you know, one of them's like, there's plenty of books that talk about stochastics. It's like I've I've been through all that. I'm downsizing. I'm going through another chap, chapter of my life. I'm just doing uptrends, downtrends, and sideways. And I put those instructions right there just in case. I also put them here. Yeah, buy stuff that goes up, sell stuff that goes down. That's pretty much it. You know, why am I even doing the show? <laughs> that's it. That's, that's pretty much it. It was funny. It was, first time I met Greg Boris. I know I tell the story all the time. You bear with me, you know. We're on a bus to a disco party after the show's done or whatever. It was Italian's party. Any anybody from Italy here tonight? You guys party like rock stars. By the way, I was approached by Italian Bank today, so I might be doing something some more with Italy. I hope I get to get back over there soon. Anyway, long story endless. Uh, I, I I could care less about a celebrity. You know, I see celebrities at the airport every now and then. I'm like, eh, you know, everybody gets all excited. Ooh, you know, uh, I could care less idiot uh <laughs> especially when they get political it's like yeah just shut up and act but uh if i get around like a like a hedge fund manager or something i'm like oh. so i'm on the bus and i'm behind greg going oh. and uh so marcy kind of breaks the ice a little bit now what do you do and greg explains his whole methodology to marcy and um uh, marcy looks at me trying to pull me into conversation goes what do you do dave they, they, isn't that what you do I'm like, no, I'm not that smart. I just buy stuff that goes up and sell stuff that goes down. And Greg turned around and goes, you got the right idea. <laughs> I don't know why I made him sound like Sling Blade. Sling Blade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So for the most part, oh, you're short. Okay, so Lauren, good information. I'm glad I'm doing the show. Lawrence said that uh, IB was able to get shares on TAN. Uh, I couldn't get shares, so I had to do a deep in the money puts. And to my surprise, I put in a limit order and um, you know I had such a shitty day. It's like, uh, I'm sitting here working on my slides or whatever. And you probably say, really, you worked on your slides? <laughs> well, I'm getting help, I'm trying to get help. But all of a sudden I heard, ding, you know, a little alert go off. So I get up and go see what's going on. Like, oh, what to lose now, you know? And it was the tan options that I, I couldn't believe. You know, I just sometimes I think I'm stupid by doing that, putting in, let's say, uh, let's keep the math simple. Let's say you buy two options at $2, okay? Put in a sell limit order immediately for one for $4. And on a spike, you'd be surprised how often on a spike you'll get a fill on that option. And now you have a free position, okay? Gold and silver have a better indicator of yields than crypto. Oh, let's look at yields. Well, let's see, TLT. So what are you saying there, Craig? Gold and silver have been a better indicator of yields than crypto. Why would you just look at um, yields versus crypto? I'm not sure exactly what you're saying, but I might learn something here. But yeah, take a look at bonds. Bonds are right at these brand new lows. It doesn't take a rocket surgeon to see which way they're headed. You know, I could hold my arm to the screen and we could figure it out. 
All right. Uh, any you guys want to talk about any individual pullbacks? I know we talk about stocks all day, and most everybody here is a member. So, but anybody want to talk about anything on crypto? GMTX, TKO, and IPO. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of TKOs out there. Yeah, look at that. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I like it. Uh, it has okay volume. Sure. You know, it's kind of a combination TKO, one bar pull, uh, what do you call it? Uh, first deep retracement. Yeah, that's pretty good, uh, John. I like it. You get a high five. So here's the deal. Remember earlier I was talking about stops? You know, you can say, well, I'm going to trade this and use a one-point stop. Well, this thing moved three points today alone, okay? So if you trade it, get in at 16, put a stop at 13 or below 13, ideally. So at least a three-point stop. And just adjust your share size down accordingly. If you go to members resources, you can get the tracking sheet, a, a blank tracking sheet, that same one I use in the service. And just punch in your account value, whatever you, or whatever account value you want to trade. And at 2% risk, it's going to tell you how many shares to trade on this particular stock. So yeah, absolutely. What's 2,000 divided by three? You probably wouldn't want to go with a full 2%, but let's just figure it out. 2,000 divided by three equals uh, 666 shares. So let's just say 600 shares. Now, if you try to do a one point stop with that, you'd buy 2000 shares. Well, trust me, if you buy 2000 shares of this with a one point stop, you're going to be hating yourself by the end of the day. You're, what did I just say earlier about, about present Dave and future Dave, you know, so present John and future John. <laughs> oh man, I'm a, I'm a nervous to watch this recording. I'm kind of punch drunk, huh? Okay. Any, any other stocks? Going once, going twice. Well, while we're at an impasse, I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered, daviddavelander.com, obviously. Everybody have a great night. If we don't talk to you now and then, everybody have a great weekend. Thanks so much for watching. And again, like the video if you're watching the recording and subscribe for daily content on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much.